I don't know if I'm allowed to unmute, but are those donuts? They are. Oh, I can't handle how adorable that is. I oh, love them. Oh my god. Thank you. Sorry for breaking the rules, Evan, but I just had to I had to address oh, you're fine. I break the rules for donuts regularly. I I, what's your favorite donut? My favorite donut? Um, I specifically have a favorite of the buttermilk bar from this little place called Primo's in Santa Monica. But yeah. it's the best when it's fresh, and I never want to wake up at 6 a.m. and drive down there. So I've only had it super fresh once, but it was a dream. Oh, Boston Creams. I get Boston Creams. I like pull up to Dunkin' Donuts, and I'm like, actually, I need a dozen donuts, but just make sure half of them are Boston Cream. That's fair. <laughs> the best donut, you know, it's the best. They're a good one. I'll keep myself quiet and chat, Evan. I'll keep myself I'll keep myself contained for you. You're good, you're fine. So we'll just wrap up, but in the meantime, while we're just waiting for the last few stragglers, Kaylee, do you want to kind of give us a quick gist on who you are for those of you who don't know? Sure. Uh, my name is Kaylee Mills. I am a voice actress and singer. I do a lot of like English dubs of anime and stuff. You might know me as Amelia from ReZero, Kaching from Genshin Impact, Alice from Sword Art Online, maybe Union from Konosuba. Um, yeah, I do lots of fun stuff. And I also um, adapt scripts and lyrics and sing a lot of songs and anime and games. Perfect, perfect. All right. So just a reminder for everybody, uh, if you have a question for Kaylee, go ahead and throw it in the chat. We'll have you unmute and ask that question. Uh, so why don't we start off by saying, oh, I had a question. And now I'm blanking on it. So. It'll come. We'll go, we'll go ahead and start with the easy one. Um, what, oh, okay, here you go. Julie has a question in the chat. Do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, out of all the things that you do, because you do so much, like what is like, what is the one that maybe not the favorite, but the one that you enjoy doing the most? Like the thing that like, if you could do it more, you know? Um, eating. <laughs> I really like eating. It's my favorite. <laughs> is that valid? Is that a valid response? <laughs> that is the best response. Fair, fair. Okay. All right. So I remembered my question. Um, so voice acting, a lot of emotions thrown in the booth. Have any of those emotions ever left the voice recording booth for you? Or do you kind of keep separation from that? So I do my best to kind of keep separation just to kind of like protect myself, but there's definitely plenty of times where like I'll go into the booth and with, with the intention of like that, but the only way to really get to like that emotion or that place is to just be completely vulnerable. And then in a lot of those cases I do leave and I'm kind of like in that mode for the rest of the day. Uh, that happened a lot and like March comes in like a lion. Um, there was actually a point in recording where one of my childhood friends had passed and I got the news like right before my session and then I had to cry for my session and I was like, there's no way I can like control that in this. Uh, so some of those tears were very, very real. Um, I don't necessarily always suggest using those things like those fresh open wounds uh, because it can hurt you. But uh, yeah, it was real and uh, there was a lot of it. Okay. All right. And all right, so you've done, I'm looking at the wiki of all your characters and it's, it's quite a lineup. Um, just a fun question, of the characters that you've played, have there been any memes out there that you've just said, that you just found the best? The best. Um, there's definitely- you can think of. There's definitely a lot of like, I love Amelia that I see all around and used in different ways. That one's fun. Um, Kuching stopped procrastinating like all the time, which I uh, 
need to take into account myself sometimes. I'm like, oh, I gotta yell at myself. I really do. <laughs> Procrastination hits us all. Hits yeah. us all differently. <laughs> For sure. Those are the biggest ones I can think of. I feel like other people are probably thinking of a million other ones that I'm not right now. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh yeah. All right. Uh, another question that I had, um, and feel free to say you can't talk about this, but um, how has COVID affected sort of the voice acting world and how have you guys kind of evolved from it or big changes that you've seen? Oh yeah, I can definitely talk about that. Um, so starting from the beginning, um, when we didn't know how long it was going to last, there was about a one month period where we just didn't work. <laughs> and we're just like, are we going to get to work? Like, what's going to happen? Um, after that time, we're kind of like, okay, well, we still need to make stuff. We still need to, and everyone still needs to like make money so they can eat and live and stuff. <laughs> so we started having to get our home studios kind of like up to par. Um, and I like, I had a decent space. I have like a, a treated closet and this, it sounds fine, but um, I originally had like my laptop in there, which kind of sounds like a plane going off after it gets hot. So I had to figure out how to get that outside of my booth. And then I had to um, like reroute a bunch of things and get like a monitor in there. So there, it, it was kind of like a little expensive to get stuff started and um that was like a real pain in the beginning, but it was nice to not have to drive after that. It's really cool that now we can have shows that have like Texas talent and LA talent and New York talent and now like even Australian talent. Um, I think that's super cool. Like we're less limited by who we can use in a show. So we get like more interesting casts that we never probably would have gotten. And now, um, now I feel studios see that it's possible to do this regularly. Um, so it's just really expanded that there and I got to work with people I never thought I'd get to work with so that's very fun. Any any standouts that you were like I can't believe I got to work with blank. Or yeah just um, just cool? I mean I getting to work with Funimation a little bit more was really cool because you know just like growing up I really wanted to work with Funimation and uh, I didn't never lived in Texas so that didn't happen so much. Um, I get to work with Sound Cadence, but Sound Cadence is actually really awesome because they've been doing that since before the pandemic. Um, like we worked on Kimono Friends years ago and they cast me from LA and I flew down there and recorded then. Um, so that was cool. But yeah, just bringing a lot of Texas talent to LA dubs. So getting to work, you know, alongside different people. Perfect. All right. Uh, so we've actually got a question from Taryn. Taryn, if you have a mic. I don't have my proper mic, so I apologize for the sound here and in the echo. They sound um, great. <laughs> thank you. If there is any series you could have a part in, what would it be? I would love to be a part of my hero. I think everyone would. Um, and I'd also love to be a part of like uh, probably Boruto now because Naruto's over. But that was one of the first things that got me into anime like as a, a teenager and stuff. So. That would be really cool too. All right, thank you for that question. Uh, RJ, you have a question. Do you have a mic? I do. Sorry Perfect. if it's a little echoey. Uh, what's the favorite, what's your favorite character of all time that you've voiced? That's a hard one because I do feel like it, it changes a lot, but I still kind of go back to Clara from Welcome to Demon School Irumakun a lot because she's just so much fun off the walls. She also gets to sing and I get to like write her songs, which is fun. Um, yeah, I'd say she's probably like definitely up there of my favorites. Awesome, thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right, all right, Julie with another question. What inspired you to get into voice acting? Like, was there like a specific show or character? Like, like it seems like there's so much acting options. Why were you like, mm, voice acting, let's go? Um, well, I was into like, you know, Sailor Moon and Pokemon like a lot when I was a kid. Um, what got me into doing more voiceover versus more theater or on camera was um, when I was around nine, uh, the recession hit really hard and my parents also divorced then. So money became a problem and we were moving all the time. Um, I think I went to 12 or 13 schools before I graduated between then and graduating high school. 
So I was never able to stay in one place uh, with like a theater troupe for long enough to get to audition or stay um, in um, the, do any productions or anything like that. Um, I think I did one the entire time I was in school because I was in a school for a whole year once and that was cool. <laughs> um, and then besides that, um, when I got into high school, I started having symptoms of lupus, even though I didn't know what it was. And so I would miss a lot of school. And because I missed a lot of school, then I wouldn't be able to audition because they're like, oh, your um, attendance is too low. Even though my grades were fine, it was like, your attendance is too low, so we can't let you do anything extracurricular. So um, I found like this whole community online and I was really into singing. My mom was a singer and I, I love singing. So I like the anime music. So I got into that and doing English lyrics for fun when I was probably 12 or so. Um, and then that eventually segued into doing voiceover as well, um, because I loved acting and I just, that was the only way I found that I could do it. So like, I'm just really grateful that I grew up in a time where that was accessible to me. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was so much fun. I met a lot of great people. Some of them are out here with me now. Uh, and that's just really cool. We're all, we can all connect that way. Sorry if that was a really long answer that didn't stop. <laughs> yeah, long answers are great. That's perfect. Yeah, Julie says that's awesome. All right. So, do, 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 do. so another question that we've got is, um, what is the best role that you've done so far, whether it be um, anime, video games, you can kind of give pick and choose from each kind of category? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, let's see. I mean, I've said like Claire is kind of my favorite. Um, Amelia means a lot to me. Um, Amelia was one of my first anime roles, which is crazy to think about. Um, and the thing about ReZero is I was a fan before I got to audition for it. I used to watch ReZero, uh, I think it was Wednesday mornings when it came out. I would do my ab workout in the living room and watch ReZero. Um, so I never even expected I would ever have the chance to audition for it. So I flipped out when it even came into my inbox in the first place and then booking it was just a whole a whole nother thing. Um, and Amelia's just had so much growth as a character and I feel like she kind of grew with me because I feel like, you know, Amelia starts out and she's not the most interesting character and there are reasons for that which you obviously if you've read if you've watched through like season two you know um but she's grown so much since then and had to show so much more of herself and i feel like i got to grow as an actor and a person uh, my own confidence since then so going from like not having this confidence and knowing exactly where i fit into this to really knowing um when she gets to know was just super cool for me um video game wise i mean there's there's a lot that's been really fun but i think kuna really stands out to me because she sings uh, i've always i wanted to be an idol when i was younger that didn't happen because i'm not japanese <laughs> but uh that was kind of living my dream of that um got to do you know voice acting of course and then got to sing the songs and they're really good songs and they're really fun to perform um, I hope I get to perform them at cons or something at some point because that would be awesome. But yeah, she means a lot to me for that reason too. Perfect. And can you actually tell us a little bit more about your uh, influences with music? Because I see you have a YouTube channel with all sorts of different songs that you've sung. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, so I first got into it through music. Uh, I really liked oh, it was Tokyo Mew Mew. So like one of the first covers I ever did was uh, My Sweetheart. I got really into Mermaid Melody. If anybody knows that show, it's a uh, they're, they're singing Mermaid Idols. It's amazing, and I love it. Um, and yeah, I just started writing uh, English lyrics to some of these songs, and I realized I kind of had a knack for it, and I really had fun with it. So I kept doing that and posting on YouTube. I don't get to do it as much anymore, but I do get to do it in my job. So that's really awesome because I never expected that uh, we would be, you know, doing English versions of songs like we are now, because it really stopped for a while. Like we had like the Oren opening and then between then and now, there are maybe some DBZ songs that got dubbed and that's about it, but we're doing a lot more now, which is awesome. And I'm like, that's that was one of my goals in this industry. I'm like, I'm gonna come in and we're gonna do more songs and we actually are. So that's, that's something I'm very excited about. Um, as far as getting into singing, yeah, my mom was a singer uh, she was a backup singer for a singer called named Bob Seeger, um, old time, like super popular in like the 70s and 80s rock and roll guy. Um, 
So after after all of our times, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, old time rock and roll. That that's him. And my mom's in the music video in the background when they show the live thing, swinging her hips more than the other background singers. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So tell us a little bit more about the translation process, because obviously you're going from one language to another. Is that something mm -hmm. you handle? Is that something that you get from someone? So when we're translating a script or a song, um, we will get a direct translation um, or usually close to direct. Some of the translators kind of put their own spin. Um, I speak enough Japanese that I kind of know when that's happening. Um, but yeah, we get like, you know, from a real translator who speaks both languages fluently. Uh, the direct translation, and then it's our job to, if it's, you know, an anime script, make it fit in the flaps, but also make it sound like a person would speak. Um, you might notice, uh, especially with some older scripts, when it, people weren't as used to doing this, uh, there might be like weird uh, spaces and lines that don't sound natural. Uh, maybe they're just speaking in a way you're like, people don't talk like that, but um, that's a big aim now is to be like, okay, well, people talk like that here. Um, and, and sometimes you have script changes uh, that are because that are cultural um, as well. So that's an important thing to kind of know when to use and when not to, because I'm sure you've seen it where something's changed too much to where like the original meaning's lost. And then there's that sweet spot in the middle where you're like, this is going to reach an audience that might not understand the original cultural things, but it's also still saying the same thing. So I think that's kind of the, the goal of adapting a script and, and knowing what you're working with, because if it's a very like comedic, funny thing and the comedy isn't going to be understood by like a Western audience, that that needs to be changed a little bit more than something serious, which you want to keep as close to the original meaning as possible. And then with songs, um, there's that entire process as well. But also, you know, you might want to add a rhyming scheme in. Uh, you might you, you want to make sure that the uh, words that are emphasized in the original are still emphasized in the song, and that might not play out the same way. So you kind of have to move things around so that it sounds like it's sung naturally. Um, when I adapt songs, I really want it to sound like it could have been originally written in uh, English. I don't want it to be like, that sounds weird. Like, why would somebody write like that? Um, so that's that's a big aim that I have, um, and I'm sure a lot of other people that adapt songs do. And uh, yeah, I guess the aim would be that the audience that you're writing the adaption for will experience it in the same way that the original audience experienced the original. Okay, perfect. So I'll actually jump back, jump back to an earlier thing that you mentioned. So the lip syncing with anime. Um, mm -hmm. How, how is that a challenge for you? Is that something that comes naturally with matching it up with the characters? Yeah, so um, I feel like if you have a musical background at all, uh, timing with like the flaps and stuff like that is a little bit easier to catch on to, but it still takes a lot of practice. Um, like when I first came to LA, I took a lot of workshops, just pract like going into the studio and practicing doing it because the first thing you do is like, you're so focused on trying to fit it into these flaps. Um, the acting kind of goes out the window at first, so you kind of want to just practice that muscle and uh, do it as much as possible so that you can, you know, add that back in without even being so so much worried about that. Um, and there are cues in the script where there's like bits broken up, there'll be like a little carrot symbol or something like that to show you that there's a break. Uh, and that's really helpful too, so that you don't have to 100% focus on that. And also, the engineers are amazing, and we have great technology now. So if you uh, start your line a minute later, uh, they can just kind of scooch it over, and that's very helpful too. <laughs> technology always helps. It's it's amazing, and some of the progressions that we've made with that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So another question. Uh, so I, according to your bio, you are an avid gamer. Um, with your i am a that, casual gamer <laughs> i mean i mean i did see animal crossing pokemon but i i was actually wondering um so of the games that you voiced do you ever hear first off do you play games that you voice let's start with that here and there um i think i prefer watching other people play them a lot of the time um i did play a decent amount of valkyria chronicles i just i thought that was kind of fun but i don't know i'm not, I'm not great at games I like the stories and games mostly. Um, I used to play a lot of League, but I'm also really competitive, uh, and I had to stop playing League because I was getting too angry. You got too too ahead of it. Okay, so all right, so we'll skip that then. <laughs> so we're not. 
right, so I'm not seeing any new questions in chat, so we will just jump right into Animal Crossing. Tell us about your village. Brag about it. You have a platform. <laughs> no, I'm. I actually haven't played in a while, so I feel bad. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the only thing I'm really proud of in my village right now, besides the fact that like everyone's still alive somehow, <laughs> because the game doesn't let anyone die. <laughs> no, the fruit trees just keep pumping out no. them. Yeah. Um, but I have my house in like the back corner on like a cliff, and then I have some waterfalls on the side, and then you go up a staircase to get to it, and there's like a a bunch of trees and flowers. Uh, to get okay. to that. That's Excuse what I'm most proud my cat, of. My cat's being a mess, so. It's all good. I have cats too. They're usually screaming at the door. I'm surprised they're not right now. Probably because yeah, they I think I'm talking to them. <laughs> yeah, we have a TV that she just loves to jump up and over. <laughs> all right. So, speaking of, all right. So, uh, acting. So other than voice acting, um, do you have any stage credit that you've done? The only stage credit I have was in eighth grade. We did Schoolhouse Rock Live Junior uh, at my middle school. And it was awesome and it was so much fun. And we actually got to tour around to, like some of the local elementary schools and perform for them and they loved it. So uh, that was definitely a big thing that kept me going in acting, even though it's the only thing I really got to do, but it was, it was just so much fun. Are there more opportunities that you're open to trying as far as acting goes, or are you just happy with voice acting and that's what you're good with? I actually started taking quite a few um, on-camera classes before COVID happened. And obviously COVID happened and it was kind of a weird time to try and get into on-camera. Um, so I kind of took a step back, especially because it was just such a stressful, overwhelming time for everyone. And um, now that things are, getting a little bit better and thinking I'm going to start pushing for that a little bit more because I do I do like doing on camera as well and I like I like working with other actors you get to do that with animation too but I don't get to do animation as much either so more of that mm. would also be awesome <laughs> perfect um all right so is there a type of character like personality that you like uh voice acting more than others so like do you prefer peppy or do you prefer kind of the monotone characters examples I just like getting to do a lot of different things. <laughs> the kitty. Um, let it happen. <laughs> I like, uh, yeah, I like the fact that I get to step into all these different characters. And the cool thing about voice acting is you don't see your face. So you're not kind of pigeonholed into being like the weird best friend, which is obviously what I would be, <laughs> which is fine. I like that. Um, but, you know, I get to play characters like Clara and then I, the same day I can go and play like Alice and they're completely opposites. Um, and that's that's, I think, what the joy is in voice acting for me. Um, I do like when I get to play characters that um, have a little bit more of like subtlety to them um like alice does um that's like it's just it, it, even if it seems like it's less energy uh there's more there and it's like more work and that's just fun to explore too but then then again like clara is my favorite and she's off the walls all the time no subtlety to be found anywhere so yeah they're both great <laughs> it's a blast otherwise okay all right da, da, da. so so voice acting, um, we've heard from a couple people, you know, there's a certain routine that you have to keep in order to keep the vocal cords nice and healthy. What's, mm -hmm. what's your personal routine to keep that going strong? Number one is lots of water all day, every day, always drink water. Um, before I do sessions, um, unless it's like maybe a commercial session or something really subdued, I do vocal warmups. Um, you can find like any vocal warmups on like YouTube. I got some from like one of my vocal teachers at one point and they're just like, you know, trills and scales and stuff like that to get your voice warmed up without pushing it too far. Um, just finding a song that you like to sing and like warming up with that's great too. Um, aside from that, sometimes I'll do like throat massages, but maybe like have someone teach you to do it so you don't choke yourself <laughs> if you're going to do that. <laughs> um and then taking days off so um just if if you have a really sore throat or you push yourself too hard 
um, take a day where you don't speak like vocal rest. I'm really bad at it. I'm really bad at not talking in case you haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> but um, it can be really, it, really helpful. Like sometimes that's the most helpful thing you can do is to just not talk. And then if you're around people you don't want to talk to, it's a great excuse to not talk to them. So yeah, perfect. All right. Uh, so tell us about uh, what are the best experiences that you've had with voice acting, um, whether it be at a con or in person? Oh boy. I'm just like, everything is so, everything's great for me. <laughs> um, I think one of the best parts of being in VO out here is like when I moved out here, I expected it to be kind of catty and people to kind of be closed off to new people. Um, and I was like understanding of that. Like I was prepared for that. Cause I'm like, oh, they don't want people to feel like they're, you know, using them or anything like that. And one of the first things that happened when I moved out was Kira Buckland, who is one of my good friends and who we've worked together a lot and who is amazing, uh, invite like invited me out for coffee, like one of the first days I was out here, like she invited me and um, there were some other people around that I met then too, and just just welcomed me like never treated me like less, um, even though you know I didn't have credits to my name or anything important like that just and, and a lot of people were like that I mean Kira is like a god among kind, amazing humans. Um, but there are a lot out here. Um, and I was just blown away by that because I, I kind of grew up, like I said, all over the place. I didn't really build friendships. So I didn't expect that I would be able to build this many friendships out here and feel comfortable in this space like I, I was. So honestly, I know that wasn't like directly VO related, but man, I love these people. <laughs> That's always good good to have friends with in the community that you have around you uh oh where did that question go excuse me for just a second i had it and then i lost it um all right oh um so how much research do you do in a character there she goes again um how much research do you do in a character before you start recording voice lines for them um, it depends because there are some times when I'm booked on something and they're like you're going to come in for this show and they don't actually tell me who I'm going to be until I get there. In which case I just rely on the director to tell me who I am. <laughs> um, most of the time um, they'll, they'll give you like at least the name. Um, so at the very least I will like look up a wiki and try and watch like an episode or two and at least one episode with like my character in it. Um, to get an idea of like the tone of the show um, and also like my character and where they're coming from. I do try to read the wiki so I know kind of like their their background because that that tells you a lot about like what they want in the story. And that's kind of one of the bigger things in acting is like what does my character want like and what are my intentions around that so yeah I, I do everything I can sometimes it's just it's too busy and overwhelming to watch like an entire series. Um, and especially now that things are getting dubbed so fast, like simul dub style, there isn't always uh, anything else you can look like read forward to unless there's like a manga. Um, but yeah, if I have the time, I'll even do that. I'll like find the manga of it, see what see what's up, um, try and flip through it. I have been a uh, whole series before when I've had the chance, but not often. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of tough when they just put you in and say, well, we'll tell you who you voice when you're actually here. Yeah. Um, it's fun, though. So is there a particular, not necessarily a character, but a certain performance that you've delivered that you are extremely proud of? Like a I mean, certain I've... moment that every time you hear it, like, that is the best thing I could have ever done. Even though it was one of my uh, first anime roles, um, Hina in March comes in like a lion, still one of my favorite things that I've done. And like probably one of the deepest places I've had to reach for a character. Um, yeah, and that show's just amazing in general. So if you haven't seen that show, whether you're a, a sub or a dub person, like check it out, it's amazing. Perfect, all right. Dun, dun, dun. second. So I keep, I highlight the questions and I click in the window and the highlight's gone. 
can I ask can I ask a weird question? Can I interrupt and ask a weird question, Evan? Go for it, Julie. Okay, I got a weird question because she's just so nice and like and everything's been so sweet. Um and I'm not gonna ask like a weird question. I just want to know like what hobbies do you have? Like is it is it gonna be as wholesome as everything else? Like what hobbies, like what do you do? Like that's not voice acting. Like if you weren't a voice actor, what would you be? Um, I cook a lot and I uh, lift weights in the gym. I I do bodybuilding a little bit. Just Whoa. casually, but. What kind of dishes do you cook? Um, I mostly try and cook like healthier, like higher protein things, like to kind of to go along with the the bodybuilding thing. Um, so I, I didn't like I always try and see how can I make this still delicious and like healthier and I have a lot of fun with that um yeah yeah so what did I make I made like zoodles with sesame oil and shrimp and like this sugar-free uh Thai sauce that was super delicious and I don't do keto or anything but like that was just it was so good I didn't know that zoodles could be good. And then I made them. I was like, what, I'm a genius. What are what are zoodles? I think I'm missing something here. So you you take a zucchini and there's like this uh, thing called a spiraler and you just like twist it on there and it cuts it into the shape of noodles and it spirals it around. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was like a fancy different way of doing pasta, but. In my okay. head, I'm picturing you know how to make vegan eggs taste good. Like in my head, I'm like, maybe she yeah, knows the secret to unlocking vegan products. eggs. Give me a week. Give me a week. I bet I could do it. <laughs> Perfect. So um, going back to the voice acting, um, how did friends and family react when you started to uh, come out as a voice actor? Um, so I've always wanted to be like a singer, a voice actor since I was a kid. Um, and my mom was, you know, she was pretty supportive because she was, did the singing thing, but she also always assumed that I was just going to go and be like a business person because I was kind of a serious kid and I always had to have things in order. Um, but I didn't. Um, when I first started singing in Japanese, my dad was like, you need to learn, uh, you need to learn Japanese if you're going to do that. Like, why are you doing this? I don't understand. Um, so I learned Japanese. Um, and then I got into voice acting. He's like, how are you going to make money doing that? Uh, so I showed him and now he's very supportive, but I kind of like had to prove that it was something viable. And I know it's just parents being like, we want to make sure you can survive. <laughs> make sure you can eat and have a house yeah, and all, yeah. that, all the important stuff. Yeah. They're like, we'll help you out. Like if you need it, but like, you need to be doing something that's going to allow you to survive on your own. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're very, they're very proud of me now, which is great, but definitely like when I was growing up and stuff, it was a little bit of like, you need more of a plan. You need a backup plan. Um, I did have a backup plan for a while. I went to college for a year, um, but I decided to drop out because I felt like putting all of my energy into the thing that I knew that I wanted to do um, was going to benefit me more than putting so much energy into a backup plan because college is a lot of work. Um, I know it's like, oh, have college for backup, but like that is that is a full time job right there is like going to college and um, I'm not telling anyone not to go to college. I'm just saying like they're both a lot of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now going back to the, the weird questions, um, have you ever since you do a lot of voice acting for anime, have you been to Japan itself? I have. Um, so when i was 18 right when i graduated high school i had already been dual enrolled in college taking japanese classes um and i had enough credits to apply to a study abroad program and i got accepted so right after high school i went to japan for three months and i lived there um and i worked on a ship called the michigan because they were this uh it was um on lake biwa in otsu if anyone knows where that is uh was a sister city of the school that i went to in michigan um so i got to work on this boat and I do like the English lessons with kids and like welcome people to the boat. Um, and they also did performances and they normally wouldn't let people up there, but like I learned the song in Japanese. So I got to like perform in Japanese song with like the other entertainers on the ship. And that was one of the most fun things I've ever gotten to do. Um, and that was kind of living my idol dream too. <laughs> <laughs> got a bit of taste of that. Okay. I did. <laughs> All right. Do anything fun else while you were studying abroad or? 
like visit more Tokyo area or northern prefectures? Yeah, so the first time I was there, um, we were really close to Kyoto. So I did go to Kyoto a lot. Um, we did visit like a lot of the shrines there, like Kiyomizudera, um, Kinkakuji. Um, that was a lot of fun. The city itself is really cool because Kyoto is this really cool mix of like there's straight up city, like new stuff. And then you have like all the shrines and this historical stuff. And it was just amazing to live near there. Um, I visited Tokyo like one day when I was there and it was not enough because Tokyo is huge and there's a million things to do and I was lost and I am always lost anyway. <laughs> um, but I also went back in 2018 with some friends um, and we stayed in Tokyo. So that was a lot of fun because I got to visit all the a lot of the places I wanted to go. I got to spend more time in Akiba, um, eat a lot more food. The first time I went there, yeah, the first time I went there, my palate wasn't as uh, it wasn't as broad. So like a lot of the Japanese flavors, like I wasn't able to enjoy the first time. And then between then and going back like that, I ate a lot more Japanese food. And then when I went back, it was just amazing. It was the best thing in the world. I was so mad. Yeah. I was like, why didn't you like ramen the first time you were here? What a waste. Wait, I'm sorry. You did not like ramen the first time that you went? I didn't. I didn't like it. I think a, a lot of it was the flavors I had. Um, I didn't like fishy flavors at all and that's like a lot of Japanese flavors but now like it's dashi really I've, deep in their culture, yeah, yeah a lot of stuff in dashi um but I love it now I don't know there's just I, I grew up on chicken nuggets and french fries yeah absolutely. <laughs> I got better yeah. okay yeah um because I took a trip there oh goodness two years ago and it's the food there is amazing you get a lot of different mm. varieties like you said there's a lot of fishy inspirations but like you know you say that maybe ramen is somewhat fish based but like once some of them eat, yeah some of them but there's so many more like mm -hmm. so it's tonkotsu is my favorite what which one Ton tonkotsu yes yeah yeah and it's it's amazing the difference in um restaurants with mm -hmm. american versus japanese style um like for example the vending machines that you just buy the tickets hand the ticket off and mm -hmm. that's your ordering process yeah it's fun and um also the quality of food you get for cheap in japan Yes, it's yeah. that we, we don't have comparison, even the Japanese chains we have here like Yoshinoya is like a million times better in Japan like you cannot compare that to Japanese Yoshinoya. Yeah, like a delicacy yeah, we have compared. A, <laughs> we have an Ichiran in New York that I'm waiting to visit, but it's oh, one of those yeah. things that like it's, it's hopefully it's going to be par, but you never know. Yeah, I'd be so curious because it is it's good. And yeah. then, of course, you get to Japan and there's like a million better places than that, but even that place is really good. So, and, and of course, you can take it home with you to be like, oh, it's just like I'm right there and I don't have to drive the four hours to get, yeah. get it here. But OK. All right. Uh, so on the subject of travel, are there any other like wish list places, bucket list places that you'd love to travel to? I've actually never been to Europe at all. Um, and so I really want to do a Europe trip, but I'm thinking I'll probably split it into multiple trips because trying to do like however many countries I want to do in one trip probably will be too much. Um, Italy is probably at the top of my list and a lot of that's food reasons. I love food. Italy's got good food. <laughs> um, I want to visit Greece and Germany just because a lot of my family is from Greece and Germany. Um, and yeah, just... I, I love experiencing different cultures. I'd love to go to India one day. A lot of that's like food too. Like just so many different flavors we don't really have here. I don't do well as well here. I, I shouldn't say that because I'm in LA and I'm spoiled by a lot of people who came here and brought their amazing food with them. Um, but I definitely uh, didn't cultures, grow up in the Midwest food. with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I just, yeah. And I actually lived in Sydney, Australia for five months as well um, when I was 19. Uh, so I'd love to go back. I miss my friends there too. Perfect. Okay. So definitely seems like you're a foodie. So let's, again, weird questions. Favorite Food Network chef? That's a hard one. Cause I, I like, I don't have cable. So all I'm seeing, like I, I do watch MasterChef though. So like I do adore like watching Gordon Ramsay yell at people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm watching Worst Cooks, Worst Cooks in America right now. So like early and season or late season. I watched all the later ones and then I'm going backwards. So I think uh, I'm yep. I don't know what season I'm on right now, but I've watched the most recent one and then like five after that. Mm -hmm. 
so five there's a lot of bobby flay episodes? uh five seasons oh um, my goodness okay so yeah bobby flay is interesting and funny she's in every season she i love her hair it's she's, it's, that's she's what great. I love her. yeah Perfect. she's also very out there and i i think she's fun <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're all just so creative with some of the dishes mm -hmm. that they come up with and how they deliver it and how they innovate on the ideas that they've already come up with. Yeah. So it's awesome. it's a dream to hit that level of creativity with food, which would be amazing. Yeah. But for now, I'll just have to deal with, you know, chicken nuggets and tater tots. Um, Elevated. <laughs> just have to make better sauces is what it is. Um, it's a lot of it, I, yeah. So Julie has a question. Uh, what does she think of all the cooking anime? Uh, I love it. <laughs> I've seen all of um, all of Soma. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of d dishes I'd like to replicate, but I would have no idea how to. I know I've seen some of them where, you know, they explain this crazy dish and I'm like, that seems insane. Like, there's no way it's that hard in real life. And it is. And like, even like most of the fancy chefs are like, I can't make that. <laughs> um, are you, are you but people with try. Uh, are you familiar with the YouTube channel Binging with Babish? Yes. So he has recreated a few of those dishes, uh, Food Wars, with the potato that turned into steak, I think is the oh, one that he did. Yeah. Yeah. I think, oh, I I think we tried it. And yeah, like you said, it, it is challenging, but given the right tools, it's totally doable. It's so weird. Yeah, I can't remember what, what the other dish was called, but it was like a seven layer thing where each layer was like super different and super complex. I think someone made that too. Oh, what was it called? It started with a T. I don't know. I'm not going to remember. <laughs> now we got to look it up. Uh, it's seven layers, Selma. Rainbow something. Rainbow terrine? Yes, the rainbow terrine. That's where the T came yeah. from. <laughs> All right. And then even just the like, the egg rice he made in the first episode. I'm like, they made that look With so good. a little good. gelatin in it. Yeah. And I know it would be good. That would be good. It like as simple as it seems. Mm, so good. <laughs> My so dinner hungry. just arrived and I need you to know that you've made me so hungry that I'm like, yes, keep talking. Keep talking about food. I'm glad you enjoy it. It's so good. So good. I kind of wish that we had like thought ahead and been like, let's let's ask her questions and then let her cook something and just watch her cook i don't know something <laughs> yeah i would have had time to clean my my kitchen and do something that would actually be fun i should do a cooking stream or something sometime i feel like if i know i'm being watched though i'm just gonna be 10 times more a mess but that's okay that'll be fun it's one of those <laughs> if, if this is pre-recorded that i can edit and there are no mistakes no i let everyone know about my mistakes it's great yeah. Then, then, then no one feels like, oh my gosh, she's perfect because I'm not. I like to let people know that I'm not. So, <laughs> Don't expect anything from me. <laughs> do, they, do they do voice actor bloopers? Like, is there like, I, I don't think I've ever seen it before, but are voice actor bloopers a thing? So we do do them in the booth. Whether they get released at any point is another story. Um, I know SAO has done a couple uh, blooper reels. Uh, we didn't do it for the most recent season because we we're all in quarantine and we we're all freaked out and <laughs> it just didn't happen but sometimes yeah I, I do wish like we had more of them because it's funny because like we're thinking the same things you do like you know some people and then there's like um like a bridge series and stuff we think those same things and sometimes we do them but we can't release them <laughs> so with those this this is gonna sound like like a silly question but are any of those bloopers scripted um, sometimes the director is like, I want you to say this because it's funny. So occasionally they are. But a lot of the time they're just, I'm going to say this thing, or I'm not even going to tell you I'm going to say this thing, just do it. So some are, yes, but most of okay. them, no. Okay. And they aren't scripted been... ahead of time. It's just like a weird conversation happens and they're like, we're going to put this in here. <laughs> Any standout ones that you can share with us? I can't, like, I don't know what's been released, so I can't right now, and I can't think That's of anything fair. right okay. now. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It can be tough with what can get you in trouble, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you briefly touched upon a bridge series. Have any reached out to you to also voice some of their characters, or is that crossing a line that you can't cross? I really should not do them. 
Um, it's kind of like once you're in this world, if you think you're going to be working at all, you know, like with a, a client that's done the official versions, you don't want to um, show that you're taking liberties with their IP. So that's why it's kind of frowned upon to do it. Fair. Um, when I was first starting, I did do them here and there. Um, and I won't I won't go further than that, but because I, I think it's like great acting experience, but I also think like you have to be careful with it and especially if you're going to use the name that you're going to use when you're um, a professional because that can come back to bite you later if they mm -hmm. find your name attached to something that you know doesn't belong to you and belongs to whoever you're working with Perfect. okay and we have Haley with a question and they ask uh what has it been like working on genshin impact fun fact i actually share a birthday with kikwing Ki Ka-ching. Ka-ching, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and she was my first five star. Oh, congrats. Um, I mean, Genshin's just fantastic to work on. Uh, the director's amazing. The clients really care about the project. Um, like all the actors that work on it, kind of like we talk to each other and we're all very into the project too. Um, especially uh, Karina, they uh, voice Paimon. And they will very often like, be like, can we have Paimon say this? And like, they'll collaborate with uh, Mihoyo and it'll end up in the games. So they're like, very collaborative, which is super cool. So you can be like, you know, I think my character might do this thing and and you can like actually ask them if you can put it in the game. And sometimes they're like, no, that's that's not, because ultimately it's it's their character, but it's I, I just think it's really cool that they're open to that and open to like uh, what fans want and stuff like that too. And yeah, it's just a very cool and beautiful game. And I am honored to be Kuching because she's amazing and the best at everything. Perfect. Thank you, Haley, for that question. Um, so I'll jump back. Um, so I see on your FAQ, you're a writer. Is that for songs or? Um, so that's like most of the writing that I do now is uh, adaptions for anime and, and songs. Yeah. Okay. Like kind All of right. what we were talking about earlier with writing like the English versions of scripts. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Didn't know if I missed a secret book out there that you had written. <laughs> no. Cook Unless you count the one. I would love to write a cookbook one day. <laughs> I did write um, a really short series called Whiskers the Cat about this cat that like saved people uh, when I was in first grade. But uh, Whiskers basically saved people like there was a fire one time and there just was a basin of water sitting atop a dresser and whiskers pushed it over and saved everyone from the fire because everyone has basins of water just sitting there so that your cat can save you what a um, hero yeah a true hero and then in the next one whiskers got hit by a truck but like was okay i don't know first grade stuff you know <laughs> okay was, was Whiskers based on a cat you knew or you just liked cats and decided Whiskers? I just liked cats and I decided Whiskers because I didn't have the best ideas for names, even though I had cats with cooler names. <laughs> okay. I had cats named Chester and Marley. They had human names at that time and I loved yeah. them, but I was like, no, Whiskers. <laughs> Do you have any pets currently? Yeah, um, I have two cats, Mochi and Anko. Where, where'd you get those names? Obviously, Mochi is Mochi. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad Mochi turned out to be a big chonky cat, which is because he is, he is, he's a Mochi, but he was this big when we got him uh, and very whiny. And then Anko uh, is a red bean cat. Uh, she's, this, uh, she's a black cat. We got her about the same time, but she's the tiniest little skinny cat. Um, and they eat the same amount. For some reason, she's tiny and skinny. And for some reason, he's chonky. I think it's because she doesn't stop zooming. We like we want her to eat more. She won't stop zooming around. Mm-hmm. And you then have to... one of those uh, cat wheels for her. I don't want her to move around too much more. <laughs> she moves too much. She needs to get chubbier. Fair, fair. <laughs> uh, we've we've got the same problem. Our cat was the uh, runt of the litter, so she runs a little bit smaller. And so I go visit Aww. friends, and I'm just like, your cat is like a small dog, and mine is a loaf of bread. <laughs> Yeah, um, they love each other. And Mochi, even though he's like the chonky one, he lets her eat first. He does. He sits there patiently and lets her eat. And then he'll take good. his. Good. 
Yeah. All right. So Julie asks, or we got a question from Julie, uh, and we'll kind of start wrapping up with this one. Um, any new projects that you want to talk about or share information that you can, whether it be the YouTube channel, voice acting, anything? Yeah, so recently um, I'm working on an anime called Full Dive as a character named Alicia, um, and she's very, she she's like, she's a sweet childhood friend, um, but then the main character accidentally murders her brother, and then she is a murderous psychopath, so that's a lot of fun, uh, and that's airing right now, it's on weekly at Funimation, um, and then uh, Irima, uh, Welcome to Demon School Irima Kun is um, the second season we're working on right now. Um, and that's on the third episode right now. You can watch that on Crunchyroll uh, as well, streaming, and that comes out every week. Um, and I'm also doing all the songs that are coming up on it too. There's one in this week's episode with the new character. I actually don't know who's voicing him, but it's hilarious. So if you want to check that out, it's really funny. I love Clara too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And just for plugging things i put in your uh youtube channel in the comments so if people want to go check that out listen to some of the songs that you've done um all right so as we are wrapping up do you have any last minute comments for everybody or i mostly just want to say like thanks for coming here and listening to me talk to you through a screen and thank you for your questions and i hope that we get to meet in person one day and um, I hope you eat really good food today. <laughs> that is that is the best goodbye message that I think <laughs> I've ever gotten. I love it. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll go ahead and call that good. Let everybody rest their voice. And Kaylee, thanks again for stopping by. Yeah, thanks, thanks so you. much. Also, thank Indian you. food is amazing. Enjoy your Indian food, Julie. Oh, it's so good. We're going to Korma. <laughs> you got the garlic. Oh, it's so thank good. You. I'm so jealous. If you're ever in Maine and you want to come eat with me, I will, I will, I will deal. I will do that. Get you some lobster. My neighbor's a lobster man. We'll hook you up. I'm sold. <laughs> we also live in, uh, next to Portland, Maine, which was like, I think rated, uh, Julie, correct me if I'm wrong, like one of the top places in America to eat for foodies. Yep. I'm just saying we've got food for you. We've got Please donuts for you. We've got, we've got, we've got a, well, when this is all over, we'll get you, we'll get you a plane. Anyway. Yes, please. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, thanks again, Kaylee, and we'll see you sometime in the future. Yeah, thank you. Have a great rest of your con. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.